Today's video is a bit different, it's not really a full PC build, it's just a setup for my personal rig 7950X 3D upgrade. I picked up the motherboard from eBuyer which is a reputable online computer shop here in the UK from their open box section and it comes with 90 day warranty and about a third of the price less. Normally I am the guy that goes all out on ridiculous motherboards like the Crosshair Formula or Rampage Extreme and even off the deep EVGA Dark Extreme end, but well because I like overclocking for fun. So why did I choose a relatively inexpensive and relatively sparse board? I say relatively here because calling a 300 odd quid motherboard inexpensive is a very slippery slope. Well, because the 7950X3D is a very locked down chip that doesn't really like to be overclocked in the traditional sense of the word. AMD allows the use of PBO and Curve Optimizer, but that is about it. These are features I employ by default on every PC I build, just like XMP or Expo, that don't really consider them as true overclocking. Next, I need to remove the backplate, which is very different in its construction to the AM4 one. This is because I am planning on using my existing EK Velocity Square AM4 block on the CPU. To get started, I need to make absolutely sure that the socket does not move during this procedure as it can damage the extremely delicate LGA pins that are found underneath. On the one hand, I am happy that the CPU has been made miles more robust by eliminating the pins. On the other, considering the exorbitant cost of AM5 motherboards that can easily outstrip the CPU, well, I feel it's a very difficult balancing act and I don't think AMD is quite there yet. Taping it up in place is actually the recommended method from EK and I thought there is no need for me to reinvent the wheel here. It seemed like the sensible thing to do so I employed the strongest electrical tape I have and got to work. If you need to do this and you are really panicked about it then something like duct tape or gorilla tape works too but you need to be careful as those can leave behind some hard to clean residue. Once the backplate is out, all you really have to do is replace it with the EK provided one and put the screws back. It's a very simple procedure that you can't really mess up unless you are in a hurry and skip the taping up of the socket step. Once it is all back together and the tape removed, we can go ahead and pop off the cover and inspect the socket, just in case. Because nothing has shifted during the procedure, the pins will be unaffected. I will be keeping the original bracket as it might come in handy when I want to upgrade, being able to return the motherboard to stock. Next, I will liberate the 7950X3D from its packaging. I will have more thoughts on this in the coming weeks after I get a bit of time with it, but from my initial impressions of the packaging are that they made it feel more premium compared to that of the 5000 series. A cynic here would say that it is needlessly more expensive, but this always bothered me that the CPU was packaged with the window on the side. Just like with Intel CPUs, you will need to be very gentle putting it in its socket because dropping it will result in a bad time. But with a bit of care taken after finding the correct key, all you need to do is lower it straight down and that's about it. Once you're confident it is in the right location, all you need to do is secure it in place using the locking mechanism. You might want to add one of those silicon gaskets to stop thermal paste from getting everywhere, but I forgot to order one so we'll just have to do without. I should stress here that there really is no need to get those locking frames, they are fairly dangerous to use and they will accomplish exactly nothing on this platform as it does not have the same mechanical issues like Intel's 12th gen did. And finally I need to add some DDR5 RAM. Unfortunately AM5 is DDR5 exclusive so that means I can't port over my 64GB to 3600 DDR4 RAM, instead opting for the 64GB kit of 6000 Mbps CL30 RAM that I overpaid £48 for it as it went on sale literally the day it arrived at my doorstep. Please be aware that DDR5 and DDR4 are really not pin compatible so you should never try to use DDR4 in a DDR5 motherboard. The only real difference I found mechanically between the standards is the fact that DDR5 is a lot harder to push into the slot. This isn't just my experience, it, it seems like this is a conscious design decision. This is the third kit of DDR5 I've ever used and all of them required a lot more force than any previous memory standard to sit correctly into the receptacle. Finally, I will be installing my MP600 Gen4 SSD. I did consider for about a millisecond updating this to a Gen5 drive, but then I recognized what a colossal waste of money that would be and just ported over my old drive. I still habitually use SATA SSDs and although most of the time I feel like a tech snob, when it comes to SSDs for some reason I am not that fast. As long as they come with a decent caching system such as DRAM or SLC, I am happy to take it and use it. And that's about it for this video. 
What lies next for me is dismantling my TV stand based main PC and that will take a bit of time and patience. Also I am planning a future video in which I show the custom loop service as it does look like it is in need of a drain and clean. But that is yet to come and this video is done. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.